Well, thank you very much, uh, Professor Dongis, for very, very candid uh, and insightful views on the current status of German economy. Uh, as I said at the very beginning, uh, I think we can draw many valuable lessons from the uh, uh, Professor Dongis' uh, uh, lecture this morning, which is very, very well summarized some of the problems facing uh, German economy today. Uh, since uh, we don't have too much time left for question and answers, uh, uh, I would have to limit to us the number of questions uh, which were submitted by uh, uh, the question uh, sheets, sheets already. Uh, uh, I will ask uh, Professor Dongis on behalf of the, this uh, question submitted uh, from the firm. The first question regards the Chancellor Angela Merkel's uh, deregulation uh, the efforts. Uh, Angela Merkel got elected on some of this uh, uh, political agenda of uh, deregulation, and uh, she has been making effort to uh, uh, reduce the government interventions and to de 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 reduce the regulations. Uh, what is the current status, and do you think uh, the Angela? Michael's uh, program of deregulation is succeeding. It's a first question. Yeah, this is a very good question, and it's not easy to, uh, well, it's very easy to answer, you know, but it's difficult to give you an answer in a, in a polite manner. <laughs> because <clears throat> you have to distinguish between rhetoric and, and facts. Um, as far as rhetoric is concerned, the German government is splendid. <clears throat> They're always talking about reforms, and so if you don't have the slightest idea of the, of the country, and, uh, you think really things are changing in the country. If you look at facts, then you find that uh, things are not changing. There are a lot of discussions, uh, but things are not really changing. This probably has something to do with, our, with the constitution or the composition of our present government. After uh, uh, the uh, last um, uh, general elections a year ago, uh, we got um, a coalition, a grand coalition, as we call it, between um, the Christian Democratic Party and the Social Democratic Party. And both parties um, have in many questions related to the areas which I mentioned in which we need structural reforms quite different positions. This became very clear during the election campaign, before the elections, but then you know they have to form this coalition because there were no other possibilities. Um, but as a matter of fact, the, 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 the thinking and the positions are quite different. So Angela Merkel now, what they have to do is somehow to bring these differences together. And then, as always in real life, you know, if you cannot impose what you consider the right solution to a problem, and the other side couldn't easy, uh, either, then you will find a compromise on the lowest common denominator. And then you are working along curing symptoms of problems, but not going to the cause of the problem. If you go to the doctor because you have a disease of someone, of course the doctor can give you something to cure the symptoms, but you may be more interested in being really restored in your health, and then you may be 
to make it another therapy. This is the problem in Germany. Um, I do not. Um, I mean, what what we what what, what what did we get? Just just have to look. You know, if you if you are going, if if you really if if you if you are thinking theoretically on, on how should how should economic policies being for a country which is really which is really determined to reform? Well, we would cut on public spending. We would consolidate our public budget. We have very high deficits uh, in, in our country. We would remove the, the welfare state. We would remove subsidies and so on. And what, what are we doing in Germany? We are increasing public spending. We are increasing new government uh, uh, debt. We will increase value-added tax from 1st of January next year by three percentage point, from 60 to 90 percent. Three percentage point at one stroke. This has happened ne nowhere in the world, never. You know, three percent, you know, because the, the, the government needs more, more, uh, more uh, revenues. As far as subsidies are concerned, we only reduce. Uh, tax exemptions and this sort of things, but we're not, we're not going to financial subsidies. They are considered something uh, which uh, cannot be uh, reduced, and so on. And so we are not doing any reform in the labor market. Absolutely no reform um, in the uh, in the labor market. That's, I mean, I could now talk about uh, about uh, one hour. You know. <laughs> what rhetoric means in economic policy. I'm sorry, I, we have here a representative of the German ambassador, but you can tell me. Well, well, thank you very much for the very, very uh, you know, view of, uh, of, of the question. Now, this question is uh, uh, a little different uh, one, and also very, very uh, uh, the uh, 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 important question for Koreans as well, because uh, it's with regard to uh, our policy toward North Korea. This question posed this way: the conventional view of the the economic aspect of Austral politics, which is giving uh, various uh, cash transfers to uh, east, uh, the uh, uh, eastern. <coughs> countries are supposed to be The conventional view of the economic aspect of the policy holds that it served to reduce tension and lay the foundation for eventual unification for Germany. However, some revisionist uh, historian, uh, historians maintain that the transfers of funds uh, merely helped sh shore up the East German regime. At the same time, the Warsaw effect uh, adopted a worse uh, aggressive stance toward the West. What is your view on this? <coughs> so, well, since we have a similar uh, power situation, I think it has some implication for us as well. <coughs> well, um, <coughs> In times in, in which, uh, in, in free unification times, uh, this really happens. happened. Um, there were some uh, uh, financial helps to the government of uh, the former G uh, uh, German Democratic uh, Republic, and uh, I, I personally uh, do not know exactly, or I cannot. I cannot um, uh, show you something, uh, something fundamental on this, whether it really has reduced some tensions, because whether or not there were tensions at the uh, German demarcation line, this was, was not decided in Bonn, this was decided in Washington and Moscow, I think. I don't know. But well, it may have had somehow at least um, um, uh, to reduce tensions. In the post, uh, unification uh, area, um, there were similar considerations saying that, well, if we, if we make transfers, um, this may help people in East Germany to take a positive attitude vis-a-vis uh, uh, -vis the, 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 the future. 
Um, and this also may reduce tension somehow. But this, I think, has not happened uh, in the way we would expect it. I think that somehow the country is still, we're still two countries somehow. We're divided, at least mentally. Um, and this um, may, can be traced perhaps, can be traced perhaps to, to the fact that at the beginning of the, the unification process, uh, many hopes were created by, by, the, by the government in the sense that, as I mentioned, that East Germany would, uh, would catch up very, very rapidly. And this was um, not really. Um, um, uh, this was not really based on good economic theory. You may know all the, the rule of bar uh, barrel on, 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 on economic growth, um, which um, shows us, and this is based on empirical studies, that it takes a long, long time uh, to reduce differences in per capita income uh, between two economic uh, regions. Um, it takes, for example, it can take, for example, 20 to 30 years. This may apply also to Korea. Sometimes you have to, to get an education. Uh, 20 to 30 uh, years just to reduce the initial gap of per capita income, let's say, between Republic of Korea and North Korea, just a half, just a half. And this is also true for, for, for Germany, um, although the differences in per capita income at the initial, uh, the, 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 the beginning of the process were not as wide as probably they are between uh, this class here of, of uh, uh, Korea. Um, but no, we were all very uh, euphoric, I myself included, I myself included, <coughs> you know, as I told you the last last 10 years ago, I thought that, well, now we are Germans, as we are Germans, we get them now the right institutions and sort of things will work. It didn't. It didn't because during, during decades, and the same also applies to North Korea, I suppose, during decades, the people were um, educated in a different way, you know. They expected everything from the state, they were not accustomed to take own decisions, and so on, you know. Market process have also been learned, you know. We, we take, these things all for granted because we, 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 all, we are all acting in more or less market economies and we, just, we, we are just criticizing too much government intervention perhaps. But as a matter of fact, we are market oriented economies. But this has to be done. So it take, takes a long time and this created frustration um, among many people in East Germany. Many of them uh, migrated uh, to the West, others are still there. And, and, I mean, um, they are living where, that's all. If you go there, you see everything very modern and so on. You do not have the impression that this is a country, you know, which 15 years ago was still a communist country and, 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 and so on. Uh, but um, but uh, tensions there are in spite of this, uh, of this not fair. So you cannot really buy, you cannot really buy the, the, um, uh, the, the sympathy or something like that just by making it not fair. Quite the contrary, it may get even a dilemma at some point. People sometimes talk about the Samaritan dilemma, you know, if you help people, they will hate you, you know, just because you're helping them. What is this the song? No, one has to be, uh, one has to be uh, careful of this. Um, but having said this, um, it is absolutely um, uh, right, you know, to make transfers as such. Um, because otherwise it's very difficult to, to, to get this conversion process uh, done. Um, uh, perhaps it would have been better, and this is something you can learn, not to put so much emphasis on consumption, uh, but to make it sure that you get this transfers into investment uh, activities, in reasonable investment activities, um, and, and in that way to improve the, the, uh, the potential output of the, of the uh, economy. But transfers as such uh, have, have to be done. <coughs> well, in, in relation with, with that, uh, what kind of advice would you give to Koreans? Uh, you, you already said a few things and you implied many things regarding our unification as well, but uh, uh, event may not allow us to have the very ideal process of unification. But if we can, if we have to, what course of action would be the best? 
to have a smooth uh, integration, smooth unification of the Koreas. Well, um, one thing which I consider important, I don't want know whether it's possible or not, but one thing which is important is to have a continuous follow-up of the economic developments in North Korea. This is something which we didn't in each other. We just, we just took for granted what the East German government was telling all the world. 10 largest industrial country and so on and so on, all propaganda. And we were really taken by surprise when we discovered in which shape this part or, or, the, or this country was economically speaking, and everybody asked himself, what the hell did they do over 40 years? You know, because normally think something people are doing. You know, the so it's important, you know, if, if it's possible to get access to information, to data, to analyze this constantly in order to make sure that they are, are not wrong hopes or, or something. This is, this is uh, one thing. And the second thing, uh, which I consider very important, that uh, when this sometimes happens, uh, to be very careful as far as the conversion rate is concerned. We will establish the common currency. And this is a very crucial point because over the conversion or through the conversion rate, you define practically all conditions, you know, uh, for the economic activities in the in the in the north uh, of the of the unified uh, country. We may be wrong, as I mentioned. Um, not the economists all will make our calculations and so, but the chancellor. It was very interesting, by the way, um, while the president of the Deutsche Bundesbank and the president of the Eastern German Central Bank were negotiating what would be the most reasonable conversion rate. They were negotiating in East Berlin at the same time, suddenly our Chancellor Paul showed up in television and said, what do I? <laughs> so maybe that if unification in Korea happens, send your president on vacations. <laughs> <laughs> to make sure to make sure that here the technicians, because this is really this is a technical issue, but it's very important. And it's not an issue which you can or on which you can decide just by political thinking or political desires or things like this. So this has to be done very, very carefully. Because if you if you buy if you if you build a car, you know, you cannot let to the Prime Minister to decide, you know, how a car should uh, be built, you know. Then please don't buy it. Don't buy it, you know. If you decide we don't want brakes or we don't want brakes or there are some things in in, in, in the in the in the economy uh, which cannot be which cannot be just decided just by by, by, by feelings. <laughs> okay, thank you. <laughs> um, this is the last question since we have to we have to end at this point and uh, actually Professor Donges has to fly fly back to Canada uh, <laughs> this afternoon. Uh, we have to release him pretty soon. Uh, this question, regards, I think you probably answered this, but uh, it says Germany was a role model of EU countries and Korea was a role model for the Asian countries as well. But both Korea and Germany are not doing very well, so no, no longer they are benchmarks for other countries. And this view, the basic cause of the uh, of this uh, phenomenon is the populism and the lack of leadership. Well, do you agree with him on that? This is uh, his question. And the, another thing is more technical, that is that you did mention this uh, uh, <coughs> the German export uh, uh, tool. Uh, I mean, the air export is doing still very well, but do you think this has to do with the uh, uh, depreciated, the real effective exchange? 
And this is uh, in, in, in addition, uh, in your presentation, you didn't mention uh, so-called co-determination system uh, at the corporate governance level. Uh, as you know, economists, uh, I mean, the journal economists, the, 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 uh, the journal, uh, some time ago dealt uh, extensively with this uh, aspect of the corporate governance. And, uh, uh, their contention was that the, this is one of the key reasons why <coughs> German companies uh, uh, have problems and uh, they go out of uh, Germany. And Angela Merkel uh, tried to, I remember she, she, when she went to uh, the union leaders, uh, she tried to reduce the number of the the uh, labor union <coughs> recommended uh, supervisors of board members for uh, corporation. Do you see how how you <coughs> uh, see it on this uh, co-determination system? Do you think it has that to do with uh, German national performance today? Well, the co-determination um, system has uh, the German co-determination system has uh, proven that at least it, is, it has not become an export article. Nobody in the European Union has uh, adopted it, in spite of the fact that trade unions uh, in Germany used to say that it's a great thing because, again, you know, it contributed to reducing tensions within the France and so on and so on and so on. Um, I myself, I'm member of a number of councils in, in France, I have made my, my own experience with this co-determination. And I can tell you that trade unions, when they are, when they are sitting there, you know, they are, uh, I haven't, I, I never understood what they are really doing, you know, they are, they are doing something for organization, which may be good, but I'm not, they're not really doing something which is good for the company and for the jobs in the, in the company. Um, the intervention of, of the Chancellor Merkel uh, was in the right direction. I mean, um, this is true. Uh, but here again, this will not change anything. You know, but one thing is that you will there give a speech and so, and okay, you get the capital letters in the newspaper. Uh, she has mentioned something which is important because this is part, part of our of our overregulated uh, labor market, and it should be changed some, uh, somehow. Um, but um, uh, in the in the coalition agreement uh, between the two parties, um, um, this is this is expressly excluded. But in co on the contrary, it said that's a very good thing; it should be conserved, and so on and so on and so on. So, um, so um, and now this this is not something which which um, uh, creates serious problems for the companies now. Because the companies, as I mentioned, disconnect from this sort of thing, they just go around. This is, this is, this is, we pay for it. We pay for it in terms of less employment opportunities. Um, the, the finance minister pays for it, it less of less revenues, tax revenues, and so on. It's just for example, okay, if, if we have these problems with co termination and other problems which, uh, which I mentioned, taxes and so on, then we go to Poland or, 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 or somewhere. You know, so, so the companies can, um, can, uh, can change this. Now, populism and lack of um, uh, leadership. Uh, here again, you know, uh, we have this disconnection between France and, and politics, but of course, I think that um, uh, countries uh, need uh, leadership. In the European Union, we even uh, have the impression, or I have the impression, that there is a, a lack of leadership in the whole European Union. Um, uh, in the past, you know, we always get this this leadership by uh, France and, and Germany, starting with with, with the Gaulle and Adenauer, and later on um, uh, Valerie de Stang and Chancellor Schmidt. And the Great Britain, when suddenly they got Margaret Thatcher at the time, she was suddenly there and did things. Did things you know, which transformed the whole economy and makes and, and made um, 
uh, this Great Britain from a very slow growing economy <laughs> to a dynamic economy. At that time, everybody was talking about British disease. Today, everybody is talking about German disease, but nobody is talking any longer about British disease. But this was just luck, you know. Um, while um, normally in, in, in a country, uh, uh, Korea, Germany, it doesn't matter, uh, you cannot have this leadership. Uh, and, 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 and you cannot hire, this is a difference to sports and soccer, you know, you can hire a good trainer for, for another club, you hire them and, 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 and you make a champion. You know, but it's, it's in, in, in politics we do not have this, uh, not yet, this system, you know, that would pay for something, who is willing to dare something and, and, and bring in a problem in order to, to make a report. And so we have to live in, in, in this um, imperfect uh, world um, uh, as it is. But it is a problem. Populism is a different thing. Populism is what I call world state. This is, a, this, is, this is this way of thinking which is really dangerous from my point of view because it changes habits in a way which are not, which are not uh, good you know, for, for dynamic economic activities. This is, but this is a welfare system. This, this, this tendency of many politicians in, the, um, in, in, in by, uh, buying votes, you know, by, 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 by giving them something, you know, um, without telling them how this is financed. And people still think that there's many social, uh, social benefits, you know, for, from heaven or so. And I always explain how they have, you have to pay for it, like by paying taxes. So the, very often the same people who get social benefits are the ones who are paying for them to so tax it, but nobody explained it to, it, uh, to them. Otherwise they would, they, they would have second thoughts and say, oh, I'm not so much interested in social benefits, I prefer to take care of myself with my own savings and so on. Um, this, is the, this is the danger of, 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 of populism, but I think here the only, the only mechanism which I can think of to, 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 to change it is globalization. Globalization means competition, and when competition becomes more more intense, um, and uh, this together with the mobility, mobility of capital and qualified labor, this will force governments, you know, to reconsider all this sort of, of thing, because otherwise they will uh, they will find in a, themselves in a situation as we are now in Germany and we become here in Korea. This may help. Globalization and an exogenous shock, as Marco Olsi, which I mentioned in another con uh, context, has also said. You know, if you get, if you want to get the societies, you know, to move again, you know, then you need some pressure from from uh, from abroad, uh, some 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 peaceful uh, pressure, and the peaceful pressure uh, for economists is always competition. Thank you very much. Uh, by the way, uh, those who are not familiar with so-called co-determination uh, system, you know, in Germany, uh, there uh, is within the company there is an executive board, which is similar to our board of directors, and then in addition they have su a supervisory board, uh, where the members are re uh, recommended by labor unions and the workers. And the other the other members are recommended by the managers. Uh, I shareholders, I mean, shareholders. I understand a company like Volkswagen. There are 30 uh, the supervisory board board members, and the 15 were, were recommended by labor unions and workers. And uh, the other 15, which is half from uh, the shareholders, so 30 uh, of them. And uh, it's hard to reach certain important decisions, and in, in some people claim that because of that, these uh, major reform measures is hard to do. But in any case, uh, that is the way called so the budget system, and this what's called core determination system. Uh, well, I think uh, we can go on, and I suppose we, will, uh, we, we have many interesting uh, stories uh, we can listen uh, from Professor Dongis, and we can do very little lessons, but uh, we have to stop here. And uh, uh, I just hope that uh, uh, the, our decision makers and policy makers and politicians uh, listen very carefully to uh, what Professor Tong has said today and to chew on them and to, uh, perhaps change some of the policy directions that have been taken uh, today in Korea, which perhaps uh, uh, 
have danger of repeating some of the genuine uh, problems uh, of face function uh, kind of genetic. Uh, with this, we have to end, and uh, uh, I hope uh, we will <coughs> have another opportunity to bring back uh, Professor Tongas and the future to talk more about uh, German. I hope German policymakers will listen uh, carefully to Professor Tongas as well. So the next time along, he comes to uh, us and he, he can bring good news to us. Well, thank you very much.